Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bonds, and welcome back to the podcast. Ah, so happy to have you back um, and to be in each other's energy. I am so excited on this podcast to share more about, you know, like this universal flow of energy that we all have. It's basically this like source connection that we all have, and I'll explain it in a second. But if you have ever felt like a victim in your life if you ever felt like why is this happening to me why like why how did I get here what's happening this podcast is for you this is we're gonna dive deep into this and also I'm going to give you some beautiful tools on how to handle this in a really positive way and also just the embodiment of the hanging out together you will feel the vibration of what it's like to be in the energy of someone who has full trust in the universe. (laughs) So let's dive right in. Um, For a lot of my life, you know, I was in this victim mode where I was like, why is this happening? Like there was a lot of bad things happening externally around me and I was just like, why is this happening? I just want peace, I choose peace. And I didn't understand, I didn't understand it. I didn't have the, you know, the the higher perspective, right? And as I started to, um, you know, start doing more looking into more spiritual things more spiritual ways of viewing the world and also connecting through to the universe through psychedelics in a very safe and grounded way I was able to understand not just on an intellectual level but on an embodiment level so like literally in my body I feel this that I have I just realized I wanted to take more of a deep breath there hmm I got really excited to make this podcast. I like have a very full day today. And I like was like, I have a friend I'm meeting, a friend date, whatever, for lunch. Uh, One of the beautiful men I met at the play party, he wants to take me out for lunch. And I said, yes, but I need to postpone it a little bit because I'm so excited to go home and make a podcast. And he was like, I support you. So um, anyway, so I have realized through (laughs) back in our story, jumping back in, um, that... I have a very strong source connection. So what does that mean? If you are not religious, if you're not spiritual at all, I will explain this in the best way I can. It's basically understanding that we are not alone in this life. That as a soul, you have an abundance of support, you have an abundance of love, and you have an abundance of connection coming to you directly from something higher higher we say higher in the more sense of like not physically higher but like outside of this physical dimension um usually why why people say higher is because frequency wise if you actually understand metaphysics and how the structure of reality works everything is like we are literally atoms vibrating fast enough that we appear to be physical matter, right? So, and dimensionally, there's many different dimensions happening and they're actually stacked right on top of each other. When you are vibrating at a higher dimension, you uh, take up less physical matter space. I hope I'm saying this correctly. I understand it, but to explain it is a whole other thing. But basically, at higher dimensions or at atoms, vibrating faster um there is what i believe is you can call it god source you know some universal intelligence that is watching over us and actually has our best interests at heart and you can also believe if this helps you to believe that it's your soul so you in spirit you on a higher level you who decided to you know have a portion of you come down here and play this beautiful game of life that we're playing and the reason why i say a portion of you is because your soul is actually so big and so infinite in consciousness that you cannot fit all of that into this physical matter construct that we are currently inhabiting in these human bodies and so what happens is we actually choose to forget a lot of who we are and what we came from and what our mission is, one, to play this beautiful game of life in a way where we're actually like growing as much as possible as a soul, but also because as a society here, 
we have chosen as a collective consciousness, so you, you kind of like sign up for this as you like drop into this human experience, that right now we're coming out of this collective choosing to explore the idea of being separated from this source connection, from our soul, from God, from the universe. So as a collective consciousness, people have decided, like over the last, I think it's like 12,000 years, I can't remember, around that t amount of time where people have decided to really, basically from the flood, you know Noah's flood, uh, uh, from until now, so from when Atlantis fell until now, We've been exploring the idea of what does it feel like to be such an individual that we are completely choosing to, from birth, l like forget that we are bigger. We are, forget that we are part of something bigger. Forget that we are all connected. Forget that we are, we are fully supported by divine consciousness, by our soul, by God, by the universe, that we are fully fully supported that there is this like divine path that has already been laid out for us and honestly all we're meant to do is enjoy the ride along the way and through following what feels good in our body and through following these intuitive leads that we get from our soul and you know these whispers of our hearts when we follow those things then we are led down our divine path and your divine path is completely protected by the universe by god by your soul like literally nothing can get in the way you cannot miss out on anything you will receive everything that is meant for you all the beautiful connections the money abundance the soul family the love the home the security everything that your heart desires has been laid out for you everything that your heart desires that is according to divine path let me put it that way because we have a lot of programming right now in our timeline of you know what we're meant we think we're meant to have and what we think we're meant to do but really your soul has this already orchestrated, perfectly aligned path for you. And once you align yourself with that, then things will just flow so fluidly and so perfectly. And you will feel it because it will feel like this. I don't know if you've ever taken psychedelics, but it's kind of like this low key psychedelic trip all the time. Like I like recently, especially I've been feeling like I'm like low key. I'm very sober these days, not doing anything. Even when I go to Burning Man, I'm not going to take anything. I want to remember all of it. And I choose to remember it from a sober, sober grounded place. But anyways, um, I still, even though I'm very sober these days, been feeling really like I'm on this kind of low key mushroom trip which is like really yummy in my body I love mushrooms I have a very, very strong connection to mushrooms and it feels really really good in my body and I really I'm sharing this with you because you deserve to feel this way you deserve to feel that you are s fully supported by the universe by your soul by God that you are on path that nothing can get in your way like you have all the abundance all all of the connections, all of the love, all of the friends, all of the support, all of the fun and adventure, laughter, it is all yours by divine right. And all you have to do is <sighs> take a deep breath and receive. All you need to do is be in this receptive state. How do we get in a receptive state? We go into gratitude. So when you already are grateful for the things that you have in your, when you're grateful for the things you already have in your life, this puts you in the energy of gratitude. And gratitude creates the vibration of receptivity. And when you're in this vibration of allowing more beautiful things to be received, the universe will give you more beautiful things that you can receive. And also, when you do vis visualization, so when you sit down, you meditate, or anytime you have some opportunity to daydream, allow yourself to dream of the most beautiful version of your life that you can right now in your conscious capacity that you can allow yourself to receive, like th th that you can visualize. Because the reason why I say that is because when I worked in New York City, I would visualize my life that I'm having now. 
But now that I have the life that I visualized back then, thank you, past self, uh, it's time to visualize even bigger and more expansive and more global impact and more wealth and more abundance and more all the beautiful things that my soul has already divinely aligned for me to receive. And by being in the receptive state and already appreciating what I have and visualizing me in this new timeline that I'm stepping into right now, it creates kind of this like energetic pathway for the universe to bring it in. So you can do this too. Anything that you're desiring, anything that your heart desires, if you don't create this vibrational, s you need to create vibrational space that it already exists. So like everything already exists in the universe, but it's like everything is probable. Did I say this right? Everything is possible, but you make it probable. So like, for instance, yes, everything is possible. You could receive a million dollars tomorrow. But are you in the vibrational space that you know what to do with that million dollars when it comes in, that you're fully receptive to it, that you're excited about it, and that you're looking at every opportunity of how it could come into your life, and you're just in this like little kid mode of like, yay, it's like Christmas tomorrow, and the million dollars is coming, and I'm so receptive to it, yay! That's the vibration that you need to be on in order to receive whatever it is your heart's desire. And let me tell you, it totally works. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is like a, I would say, I mean, this is a good example. I, I wanted to say low-key example, but as in like, um, it was easy for me to do this. Uh, I'm working currently on a lot bigger things that I am calling in and manifesting, and those things I will share. One very specific tip I want to give you. Do not share what you are calling in until it has come to fruition. The reason why this is unless it's with someone who can hold this vibrational space and support you and send you positive energy. Because if you're working on your relationship with trusting the universe, and you're like, hey, hey God, hey source, hey soul, uh, please give me a demonstration, give me like, basically like show up for me in this way, and, I, and I'm, I'm in the knowingness that you are going to do this, and I'm in the expected gratitude, and I'm already receiving it vibrationally, you, this is like kind of like you're in this very special, intimate situation w between you and the universe. If you enter other people into that, basically if you go tell your friends, hey, I'm in the middle of manifesting this thing, and they don't have this specific vibrational energy of, of actually believing and trusting in the universe, then their energy can fuck with what you're trying to manifest. So... <laughs> there's a lot of things that I have in my vortex, a lot of things in my funnel that I am manifesting that I do not share about publicly until I'm super excited to share about them when they come into the 3D. Because I know my specific relationship with the universe, with God, with source, and I know that it supplies abundantly and I know that it has my back and I and I'm just like like last night I was I was talking to the universe and I was like okay if you want it to happen in this way then please give me a demonstration by tomorrow morning otherwise I will go this way like I'm listening to whatever you are telling me and whatever is meant for me to receive and also I know that I'm meant to have this thing as long as it's according to divine plan, but I can feel that I'm meant to have this thing. So I'm just like in this like kid before Christmas mode of like, yay, in what way is it gonna come? Yay, yay, yay. Anyway, so the example I wanna share is, um, you know, I had just came back, like I was here for a week and I was planning a bunch of stuff with my girlfriends for Burning Man, booking our flights, because we just decided like two weeks ago we're going. And uh, you know, like Burning Man, you have to do a lot of prep, like, you know, buy a bunch of stuff and, it's all really exciting, and also it's a lot. And then coming home and just handling stuff with my house that I needed to handle, and then organizing the play party. Let's just say come Monday morning, which is two days ago. I'm like, what day is it? <laughs> Today's Wednesday. Uh, so two days ago, I woke up, and I was very, very tired. Like, you know, like if you've ever taken MDMA, it felt like a calm down from MDMA, like, because, you know, the play party is just kind of this organic ecstasy feeling of, like, heart open, and just this vision of, this, like, manifestation of the vision of how we can live together, and how we can be so heart open, and so playful, and, so, like, healing so much collectively together, and then I just was so tired from all the stuff, 
And then I was like, oh my God, I need to, I need to rent out my house. Like I'm gone for one month. Uh, I, I think a, a month, maybe a little bit longer, but at least a month uh, to America for Burning Man and to see my family. And I, it's not like for me, um, renting out or subleasing my house is, is a very intimate thing because I put a lot of energy into the space here. This, this house that I have, the collective, is a vortex. Over the last four, almost five years, I have put so much energy into the space and so many events, so many, so many beautiful things have happened here. And also it is my home. So there's this whole other element of like intimacy there. So normally I have just like literally like soul family live here. Like I don't really let anyone else stay here. But this time around, there isn't that many of my soul family on the island. They're all traveling just like I'm about to do. And so I put it into, well, first off, this is what I did. I sat down, I meditated, I did some rape, and I said to the universe, I choose for someone to stay here who is a guardian of the space, someone who will protect the energy here and also will respect that this is my home and leave it in a better place and better cleanliness and a better energetic state than what they even came into it. So they will add to the energy of the space. I am happy for them to do events here, but I choose that I don't want any sexual events happening in the space when I'm gone because this is my home and I want to make sure that, like for me, there's a thing of like, I need to know that it's safe and, w and if I'm not here, then I don't know what's happening. And that's just my personal boundary and this is what makes me feel safe. And, um, and also I choose for the people who live here while I'm away to be friends of mine, friends that I love. I really love them, you know? Like I'm just like happy that they're in my house you know, good communication happening back and forth of like supporting what's going on in the house. And I'm happy for them to do events, you know, like I'm happy for them to add to the energy of the community. It's a community space. And also I choose for them to have a really good relationship with my animals, like uh, take Afro for a walk every day, feed my cat Shadu and like give her some love, you know, she's a very special animal and she needs special care. And so I put it in my remote collective. I have a I have a WhatsApp group chat with like over a thousand people for my remote collective community here, and I put it in there. And I just was like, so it is, so it is, so it is. Like it's happening. The perfect people. Because there's a part of my physical mind that was like, it's no. So th I did this Tuesday. Yes, I did this yesterday morning. Tuesday morning. So it's Tuesday. I I leave the island on Sunday. So there's like a part of my physical mind that's like, wow, ah, I could freak out and be like, it's only, you know, four days until I leave for a month and I need to find the perfect people and I need to feel good. None of that mattered. I'm in, I'm in creator energy right now. So I choose, I'm working with the universe. I choose exactly what I need in my space in order for me to feel safe, to go and feel good about, you know, who's here and, and my animals and stuff. And within an hour of me posting that, I got a message from two of my guy friends here. They're uh, Israeli and they're super healthy masculine. They do like men's coaching and they wanna, they, they were like, yeah, we wanna, I think we wanna rent the space. And so they came over and we all talked and I explained my boundaries and they were like, wow, thank you so much for communicating like such clear boundaries. We're super excited to, ho to honor them. And also like, yeah, we love your animals. Like one of them, I see him, I see, I see him at the beach like almost every day. So he knows Afro really well. And, and they're like, yeah, if you're okay with it, we're excited to do like men's circles here and different, different events like this. And I'm like, yeah, I would love that kind of energy here. Like, please do men's work here. Um, and so within an hour, I had someone who was perfectly aligned, loved my animals, excited to honor my boundaries, protect the energy of the space and put, good energy uh, events into the space. And so for me, this is like, this is a perfect example of your relationship that you can have with the universe. So you can say to the universe, like I choose to have this thing happen as long as it's according to divine plan. And like, I need this to happen in order for me to feel safe with the situation. Like you can, you can negotiate, you can make terms, you can, you know, you can play around with it and trust. But the, the most important part is that you are in complete knowingness that what you choose is actually going to manifest. The, and what you can say is this or something more divinely aligned. Because sometimes our physical mind can only 
imagine so far, right? Like because of our programming, maybe we're not even allowing ourselves to imagine like the amount of abundance that we could potentially receive or the amount of safety or connection or whatever. So you can say this or something even more divinely in line, even more abundant, something even better than this that is be like meant for me. Um, and trust that whatever is meant for you is coming to you. It is your by it's yours by divine right so you're not taking up space of someone else you need to take up space within your own life you need to take up that space knowing that that is your space that you're meant to take up like you came here as a soul to take up space and to shine your light in the world and you need specific things in order to do that and this is your relationship that you're building with the universe like for instance for me in order for me to shine my light at Burning Man and to go to the West Coast, connect to the spiritual community there, work with my family, heal whatever I can, I told the universe, I need these specific things. Nine out of 10 of them have been met now, including one of the major ones was someone staying in my home that I trust and that will you know, take care of my animals in a way that feels really good in my body, right? And so it's interesting because like, there's like one more thing that hasn't completely, that is still manifesting, we'll put it in the positive, and I'm really, this is the thing I was falling asleep to last night, like I was like a little kid, like I'm so excited to see how this manifests, because everything else is perfectly aligned, and I know this one's going to fall into place, and I got a little nudge from the universe last night about it, and I was like feeling into the best way the universe wants me to play it out, you know, because it's one big game, and when you're in this full trust of the universe having your back, and you know that you have this direct plug-in to source, to God, to your soul, whatever, this, this higher perspective who is already has your back, already has everything aligned for you, there is no more space to be a victim in your life. So this is what I was talking about in the beginning. Like in the past, I didn't understand this connection. I didn't understand how to work with it. And so I was running around um, in need of connection to other people, hoping that they would fulfill the source connection. And because of the way I was raised, a lot of this seeking that I did personally on my own personal journey was through spirituality, was through the men in my life. I was making men my church and my God and my source connection. Uh, and now that I understand that I have my own source connection, and actually me, Brittany Bond, has a very fucking strong source connection the whole time. It's actually been me. I've just been projecting this through other people because I thought that's what I needed to do. And now that I'm just allowing myself to connect to source on my own and feel this source connection, oh my God, it's so powerful. It's so beautiful. And I feel so grounded in my body and so safe. I feel so safe and so supported and connected and loved and just in the knowingness that everything is working out for me. Everything is working out best case scenario. And like, it's only getting better from here, like, because it's only going to be more and more of what is in my divine path and what I am aligned to do within myself. Like, like that what is, what is destined for me is coming for me. And you have the same. That's why I'm sharing this with you because I hope that, and I know, I know that by sharing this with you, it will give you this like energy push, invitation push, whatever you want to say, to connect to your own source connection and to understand that you are divinely guided and that no one can take this away. If you want to choose to feel like a victim, this is an opportunity for you to understand that you are choosing this. You are so divinely protected and guided that if you choose to explore the idea of feeling disconnected, then God's source, your soul, they're going to allow you to feel that. That's how much you are supported. That if you want to run off like a little kid throwing a tantrum and being like, Meh, I'm not supported, I'm a victim. They're going to be like, okay, but I'm here because I love you. And I'm not going anywhere. So whenever you stop throwing that tantrum, you can come back. And I'm not saying that we're doing this out of an egotistical place. I think a lot of us are just programmed or through trauma, we just like don't understand that we are so connected. 
And that's why it's taking people like me to go through all of this trauma and to understand all of this and come out the other side and say, hey, if I went through this and I'm okay and I trust the universe and I'm divinely guided and my life is abundant and magical and flowy and all the things, then use me, use me, utilize me. I think that's a better word. Utilize me as an example that you can also do this too, that you are divinely guided and you are on path. Um, I want to share one more story about this, about like following your divine path. So I woke up yesterday morning and I was really tired. Like I had planned to go to Wainam, which is this day party. You have to like drive down a half an hour to a beach called Hadren and you either Normally I hike over, which takes like an hour and a half. And I love the hike. It's like through a deep jungle with my dog, Afro. And we have the best time. There's this viewpoint that overlooks the whole couple of beaches. And it's just so fucking magical. Uh, and then it's like these secret beaches. And there's like these day parties that happen there. And a guy that I was, um, a lover that I had in the past, uh, is back on the islands. And he was DJing yesterday. And he messaged me. He's like, Brittany, come you always inspired me to, you know, play my music. And here I am, my first real set at Wainam. And, you know, it's him and I's, like, favorite. Like, Wainam is my favorite place in the whole world. It's also his favorite place in the whole world. And so we just have this very magical connection there. We've had a lot of amazing times. And I was uh, really excited to dance to his set and support him. And also, you know, I had organized, so me being me, I just tell my friends, hey, I'm going to Wainam. And they're like, oh, my God, I want to come. So I'd already, like, organically organized this group of friends, and we were all going to hike over it together. But I woke up yesterday morning, and I was just still really tired from the weekend, from all the playing, from all of the big life expansion things that are happening in my life. Like, it just takes a lot of... I, I felt like I needed more integration. Like, knowing that I was about to get on a plane on Sunday and go for I don't know how long I just I really just wanted to be in my house and hang out with afro here and just get a foot massage and ground and for me this and so like what was so ironic about this is like I was you know this is totally first world problems like I honor that but I'm just giving you this as an example that I was like feeling frustrated about going to a party with my friends and a lover of mine who was DJ. And I was just like, that's why it was so confusing for me because on the surface, I really wanted to go, but my body really didn't want to go. My body wanted to be here and to ground and just do normal things like go to the gym and go to the beach and like, like go to my local beach for sunset, see my friends <coughs> and just like, like move less, you know, like, like, going over to that side of the island is kind of its own psychedelic trip like the whole journey to get there it's a it takes a lot of energy and my body was like we want to reserve our energy for everything else you have coming and so for me it was like this moment of checking in with the universe of like okay what am I meant to do here right now and also I had a really good friend of mine my, it's like my brother Aaron come over and we were hanging out and I was just like yeah telling him all this stuff and he's like Brittany you tell me all the time do whatever the fuck you want do you want to go to Wainam and I was like no not really and he's like then it doesn't matter if you wanted to go yesterday if you don't want to go today then fuck it just do whatever you want to do um, and I was like, thank you. I needed this external confirmation to follow the universe, universal flow. Because again, we have this universal flow of what we're meant to do every day, what we're meant to do in our life. And it breaks it down into what we're meant to do every day. So I messaged my friends. I said, hey, I, I'm going to just stay local. I, I want to just chill here. And because of that, I was also able to have my friends over and like officially rent out my house, which like really was something that was weighing on me you know even though I did trust the universe and I was in the knowingness it was like something I wanted to ch very much check off my to-do list to know that like Afro had a really good people watching over her while I was gone and Shadu so I felt so relieved that's what I want to tell you is I felt so relieved to like let this go and you know and just message my 
the guy who was DJing and just be like, I'm so excited. I'm so proud of you that you're DJing. I'm going to dance my butt off for you when, whenever I'm back on the island and you're, you're playing. He was, he, everyone understood. That's the thing is if you have people in your life that are meant to be in your life, they will honor you honoring your body. If people are judging you for honoring your body, I mean, it's one thing to be like someone messaged me this on Instagram, like, you know, how do you balance that with being like a reliable person? Yes, of course, I show up for the people in my life that I love. Like on Sunday, I had a land blessing with one of my girlfriends. She's the one I'm going to, to Burning Man with and she bought this beautiful piece of land and she wanted to have some powerful women sisters come and do some manifesting, some, yeah, just blessing the land and coming together and setting intentions. I was so tired on Sunday. I had only had a couple hours of sleep and I showed up because this is what I do. Like for people that are like my core people in my life, I have their back and they have my back. It doesn't matter what's going on. Like my friend Aaron yesterday, he was in the middle of going, <laughs> dealing with his, his land. A lot of my friends are building houses here. Uh, he was in the middle of build, uh, going to his land to deal with something. And he got my message. I just was like, I could use some support. And he dropped everything and came over. This is what you do for people you love. You show up. You honor agreements. You hold to what you say. And also, if there is some flowy space, like for instance, going to a party is like, okay, I need to honor my body here right now. Like I need to rest. So there is this balance in the middle. I would just say that in order to be a consistent person that's worthy of this soul family and this friendship that is deep and meaningful, overall, you need to honor your agreements and you need to show up. There needs to be like a track record of like actions that prove that you are the person that's worthy of this type of connection. And for me, I have really let's just say recently pruned, you know, like pruning a rose bush, uh, a lot of connections that are not meeting the standard. So for me, I will only have people in my life now that really where the energy is coming back to me in a, an amplified exponential way. And for friends who actually have my back and actually show up like out of the blue, they will just message me to check on me. It's not because they need something. It's because they just love me. <laughs> and they love to be in my energy and to show up for me. And when you have those type of people in your life, if you tell them, I don't want to party today, I'm feeling like I need to ground in my own energy, they, they get it and they honor it. And if anything, they celebrate it and they're like, fuck yes. And so the reason why I'm telling you this story is because the rest of the day, as I flow through the day, I just, you know, I, so I got someone, I got my friends to rent my house, I went to the gym, but I, I ran into like four or five different really good friends of mine that I haven't seen in a while. And one of them I just found out is like moving off the island and I want to hang out with him. And he's like, I actually, maybe I'll stay longer just so you and I can hang out. And this was like, I was joking that it took me hours to get to the gym, which uh, literally takes five minutes to drive there because I kept seeing people in the road and I went to my co local coffee shop and I saw more people. And then I, th and then it just got to the point where like I was at the gym and I saw someone else that I really wanted to catch up on. And I said, can you come up on the treadmill with me? Because I really want to get my workout going <laughs> and uh, I also want to hang out with you. So he came out and like hung out with me and told me a story of what just happened to him while I was like running on the treadmill. But for me, I felt this very deep level of satisfaction. I was just like, <sighs> and also spaciousness. I think it's really important for me, especially to have this like feeling that, you know, if you wake up and your whole day is already planned, like for me, that's already, I feel a little trapped because like, I choose to have like certain things that I meant to do. Like, of course, today I'm giving two human design readings in the afternoon. I'm for sure going to show up for those, you know, but like the rest of the time I, I choose to have it be flowy where I can tell my friend, Hey, I'm actually really excited to make a podcast right now instead of meet you earlier. Can we meet a little bit later so that I can flow with the universal energy of what I meant to do. If you're in a, a life right now, currently, because this used to be me, I used to work a nine to five. I used to take the train at a, I had to, I had to leave at a very specific time in order to make the train that I needed 
Otherwise I would be like a half an hour late to work. So I was like very in this like military mindset of time matters to the point where it's very hard for me to, I, (laughs) my friends laugh because on my phone, if you click on my phone, I don't have the time on the front of my iPhone because you can't take the time off. So I, I just changed it to Arabic. (laughs) So it's like Arabic time because for me, I have this like, um, it's kind of a anxiety that when I see a time, I need to be productive. Like if I see the clock of the time, because I used to have to do billable hours when I worked in law and we have to bill down to 15 minutes. So <laughs> that's what I mean is I've explored to the extreme, the constriction of this time and this not being flowy. And I understand if you're in some sort of environment like this, where you're in a job that you need to show up for, or you have this certain time constriction, whatever, this is your life right now. And that's great. There's no judgment of it. What I invite you to do is have at least one day a week, whether it's the weekend or whatever is your day off, where you wake up and you tell yourself, this is going to be a flow day. If people want to plan things with you, you just tell them, I'm doing a flow day. I will wake up and I will let you know. And you know, if you're in a country where people plan things three weeks ahead of time, then you need to plan your flow day as if you are on a date with someone else, your whole day off. Like people ask you, what about the 15th of this month? No, I have a flow day. What's that? I'm giving myself complete permission to wake up and do whatever I want in every single moment. And all you do is you wake up and you just think of what is the next thing that I'm excited to do right now? It could be going to your local coffee shop. You go there, you meet someone synchronistically, they invite you on some adventure and you're like, yeah, I actually have time because I'm doing a flow day and this sounds really exciting for me. Or you can feel into it. No, that doesn't sound like a fun adventure. I want to go over here. And you have complete abundance of time. Abundance is an energy signature. And a lot of us have given up our abundance of time. And for me, when I realized this, I shifted it because when I give myself abundance of time and the spaciousness to allow the universal energy flow, well, I get so much more done. Talk about productivity. I get so much more done in less amount of time and it feels better in my body. So for all of you who think that you need to clock everything out, no, you don't. You don't actually. Of course, structure is good to a certain degree. It's how we get things, like certain things done in the world. I understand that. And also, we could be a lot more flowy. We could be a lot more allowing of universal abundance and flow into our lives because then you understand what you're meant to do in your life. And you understand the divine path that's lined out for you. I want to share one more thing. I'm supposed to be meeting my friend right now, but I think you'll understand. You'll, Eli, when you're listening to this podcast, you can understand that I need to say one more thing. I want to tell you that... It is a very brave thing to be alive right now in this life. There's many, I believe, there's many other dimensions, parallel universes that are happening right now. And a lot of those other ones are lighter vibrationally than ours. A lot of those other ones, um, there's less range of drama. (laughs) I think it's the best way to put it. Like things just flow easier. There's like a lot less of this dramatic upheaval that we are currently experiencing globally and as a mass consciousness. So if we, if you've chosen to come here in this timeline right now, just know that you are really brave and that you're doing great. And even if you're in a situation with someone and you're like, I see the highest timeline, I see that we could do it this way and it could be peaceful and loving and we could be friends and everything could work out. And if it's not, playing out like that right now it's okay sometimes it just needs time and sometimes we just need to allow (laughs) the density that we're in to play out because it's not going to be dense for much longer if none of this makes sense to you it's okay i'm mostly talking to your body right now that i'm proud of you to your body whoever you're listening i'm proud of you for keeping going right now in this timeline because it this energy that we are in right now is very heavy on our bodies and we can intellectually understand all of it and also our we have to honor the experience that our body is playing out and it is a it is a it is a big job that it's doing so i want to tell you that i'm proud of you 
and that I also hope that you are gentle with your body today and you do something that brings your body joy. Whether it's taking a bath, going in nature, dancing, going and getting the ice cream that you want, (laughs) you know, whatever it is, like bring your body some joy because you deserve it. You're doing great. And a lot of it is we actually need to understand that we're doing great and just enjoy it more because it is one big game in the end. And when we're out of this timeline, when we're back in spirit, we're going to realize that and we're going to wish that we had enjoyed it more and that we were more gentle with our bodies. (sighs) Okay, that's all I have for you today. I'm sending you so much love and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day.